Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about secrets in Azure container apps. These applications that we develop, they don't live alone. They usually talk to the surrounding services to get things done. And to do this, to talk to these surrounding services, our application should store credentials or sensitive information like connection strings and keys. And there should be a mechanism for us to store these credentials and these keys in our application. With Azure Container Apps, we have few options for doing this. You can store these information, these configuration values as an environment variables, or we can go with secrets and that is the topic of the day, topic of the video today, or we can go with a totally different service like Azure Key Vault. Now if you compare environment variables and secrets, environment variables are not built for storing this sensitive information. Yes, you can store key value pairs there, but they're not built for storing this sensitive information and because of this, it is possible that you may accidentally expose these secrets. And also the problem with environment variables is that they basically, they live in the scope of a container. Now if you take a container app, it contains multiple containers. And the environment variables, they live inside of these containers. And because of this, it is not possible for you to share an environment variable between multiple containers. But if you take a secret, they're built for storing these types of sensitive information. And because of this, it is less likely that you might accidentally expose them. And you have an agreement as the developer and Azure that this information should be secure. And if you take the idea of secret, they live outside of the container. Basically, they live in the scope of a container app, so you can share a secret between multiple containers. And the idea of a secret, it is common in Kubernetes as well. Kubernetes also has the idea of a secret. Uh, they also should be mapped to an environment variable to use it. In addition to that, with Kubernetes, you can mount a secret as a file in the drive. So you, so you can basically read the secret as a file in the drive with Kubernetes, but with Azure Container Apps, we don't have that option yet. And now if you think about Key Vault, yes, you can store keys and secrets with Key Vault, it's a totally different service specialized for storing these types of information. You can go with Key Vault for storing secrets if you want multiple labs or multiple services referencing the same secret. So you can keep the secret in one place. If you want to make a change, you only have to change in Key Vault reference. Now that we saw the options that we have for storing secrets with Azure Container Apps, the best option for this I think is secrets unless you want to share the secret with multiple applications. So when you work with these secrets, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. The first thing is they live outside of the provision scope. So the idea here is that when you make a change to a secret, it does not create any revision. They live outside of the revision scope in the application scope. So basically after changing or adding or deleting a secret, you should restart or recreate the revision. And that is the first thing that you should understand. And the next thing is, uh, if you think about the places where you can use these secrets are, you can obviously use them in the containers that you deploy. In addition to this, you can reference these secrets. You can use these secrets in the Dapper applications if your application is a Dapper application, or you can use them in scale roles of Azure Container Apps as well. Now that we know what secrets are, let's go ahead and play around this a little bit to solidify our understanding. All right. Here I have this simple ASP.NET application. As you can see, I'm just returning the key one environment variable. I'm just returning this in the view bag. And if I go into the view of it, I'm just displaying that key in the UI. I have already pushed this image to Docker Hub and I'm using this application to demo how secrets work. All right, now if I go into Visual Studio Code, this is the name of the Docker image of my application that I've published that I'm gonna use in this demo and you'll be able to find these files in the description down below. In this folder, we have the applications and here we have other scripts that I'm gonna use in this demo. And now if I go into this PowerShell file, first, as you can see, I'm deploying this resource group. And after that, I'm creating this content wrap environment. And after that, I'm creating this container wrap. And this content wrap references the image of the sample app that I've shown you earlier. And as you can see here, I'm passing in this secret key one is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, this value when I create this container app using the CLI. And this is how you create secrets along with the application using the CLI create command. You can create multiple secrets this way, for example, like this, you can add multiple secrets. Now let me run this script to create our container app so that we can learn more about secrets. I'm gonna press F8, the application is 
getting deployed now. As you can see, the deployment is complete. And now if I go into Azure portal, I'm in mean that resource group. We have the container wrap environment and the container wrap. I'm going into the container wrap and let's view the application. All right, as you can see here, I don't see the key one or the key two that I have specified in my CLI script. And that is because let me go back into Azure portal and go into secrets. Yeah, we have the keys here, but we don't see them here because we have to first create an environment variable mapping for these secrets to work. Now, if I go into containers and environment variables, as you can see, there are no environment variables defined for this container. For these secrets to work, I have to map these secrets into these environment variables. For that, I have to edit and redeploy this revision. Now I'm going to go ahead and create this new revision here. And I'm going to apply V2 suffix for this revision. And if I click on this container image and scroll down from this section here, I can create environment variables with the mapping to the secrets. All right, now let me enter key one as the key of this environment variable. And then we can select the source. If it's a manual entry, I can go with manual entry and enter the exact value here directly. But what I'm trying to do here is a secret reference. And because of that, I'm going to go with reference a secret option. And now I can select the secret that I want to reference to this environment variable. I'm going to go with secret one, and then I'm going to click save. And then I'm going to create this new revision. This usually takes less than a minute to deploy a new revision. As you can see, our new revision is in place. Now let me close this and refresh this. As you can see, we have a new environment variable that references this secret. Now let me go back into the application and click refresh. As you can see, the application can read the secret now. And now let me show you one other thing and I'm going back into secrets again. And then I'm going to edit this secret. I'm just going to see what do we have here. And then I'm going to change this to a, B, C, D, E, F. And then let me save this. And before saving this, I have to click on this checkbox here. So basically what I'm doing here is that I have to acknowledge that the changes that I made to my secret will not be applied until I restart the revision or until I create a new revision. I'm going to agree to this and save this. As you can see, the secret has been updated. Now it is A, B, C, D, E, F. And now if I go into the application and let me refresh it, as you can see, I don't see the change that I made. And this is because, as I said earlier, we either have to create a new revision or we have to restart the existing revision. Now I have shown you earlier how to create a new revision. Let me show you how to restart a revision. I tried to find a button in the Azure portal to restart a revision, but I couldn't find one. So I'm going to go with this CLI command here az container app revision restart the name of the application and the resource group and the revision name let me try to highlight this and press f8 to run this all right as you can see i'm getting this result now let me go back to the application and reload it i can see the new secret now the idea of a secret as i said earlier in the beginning of this video is that you can reuse a secret in multiple containers but you can't do that with a environment variable now let me go back into visual studio and show you this as you can see we can create secrets and we have multiple containers let's say container one reads the environment variable key one and container two reads the environment variable k1 but they're both reading the same secret we can go with secrets in these situations where we can create one secret and reference the secret by both of these containers. Now let me show you exactly what I mean here. If I go into containers, as you can see, we have only one container in this revision. We have key one reference to it, exactly like in the diagram that I've shown earlier. Now if I go into edit and deploy and add a new container, I can just add a container like this. Let me go with the Nginx for this. I'm going to pull this from Docker Hub public registry and the image name is also nginx. All right. Now in this environment variable section, as you can see, I can add k1 and reference the exact same secret. Now, as you can see, this revision contains two containers. All right. Now I deployed the new revision and let me refresh it. As you can see, we have the first container and that reference the same secret as 
key one. And if I go into the next container, that container references the same secret as K1. And that is the idea that I wanted to give you because secrets can be shared between multiple containers within the same container wrap. As I said earlier, if you want to share a secret between multiple application, it could be container apps or any other applications, you can go with Azure Key Vault. Now to read these secrets, I've gone with this sample ASP.NET application, but for testing purposes, you don't have to create these types of a UI to read environment variables. What you can do is you can just go into this console section and then you can select a replica. As you can see, I have no replicas running at the moment. Let me try to refresh it again. This will take a couple of seconds to spin up a new revision and this happens because my default replica count is zero so it scales down to zero replicas. Let's wait for a couple of seconds here. All right, now let me go back into console and as you can see here we have a running replica and the container selected as well and here I can connect to the terminal of this container I'm gonna go with shell here all right as you can see I have successfully connected to the container and if I try to run the command print env I can see all the environment variables and I don't have to create an application like this to debug these types of things and there's one other thing that I wanted to show you before ending this video and that is so basically we know that secrets they live separately from the containers. You can reference one secret from multiple containers. Let me show you the ARM deployment or the ARM template structure for this. As you can see, I have just opened up an ARM template and we have two resources. The first one is the container app environment and the second one is the actual container app. Now in the configuration section, I have defined the secret and the name of the secret is here and this is how you specify a value you can take the value in as a parameter of the arm template and if i scroll down we have the container section we have my first container here and the second container here they both reference the same secret and this is how you reference them so basically you give the name of the environment variable and usually when you configure an environment variable this is how you configure that the value is equal to the actual value of the environment variable but when you reference a secret this is how you reference it secret ref is equal to the name of the secret that you have specified in this section all right in this video i wanted to explain what secrets are and then i wanted to show you how they work and how you can actually use them in your applications if you have further questions or comments please let me know down below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today i will see you with another video like this soon and thanks for watching